Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden. Today we're going to be planting some bare root perennials in this area and I'm going to pop on the screen what this is anticipated to somewhat look like when I'm done later this spring. Now I have some alliums called bubble bath that I purchased from Walter's Gardens and some astilbe called dark side of the moon that also came from Walter's Gardens this week. I get asked a lot of questions about how do you go about purchasing plants wholesale like that. Well, you typically have to have a landscape type oriented business. Uh, sometimes an LLC, it depends on which state you're located in. In Ohio, if you're purchasing locally from a local garden center, you also have to have, have, have a nursery dealer certificate. So uh, everyone can't purchase these things, but to the extent you can, Walters has a lot of great perennials and I purchase a lot from them. If you're interested in forming an LLC to start cut flowers, or maybe you wanna do CSAs for your local neighborhood, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram if you want, or by email. I am a licensed practicing attorney in Ohio, so to the extent you live in Ohio, I could help you with those things. Starting an LLC is not really difficult on your own, uh, but if you would like any advice with that, I'm here to help if you'd like. And let me just show you what these look like when they come. So I have soaked mine for 30 minutes, which I like to do after I get my bare roots in, just to kind of rehydrate the roots. They're shipped in wood shavings, um, and they could have been in the box for a little bit. I'm really close to Michigan, where Walters is, uh, Southwest Ohio, so usually they get here the next day. Uh, but I just want to make sure the roots are really good and hydrated before I put these in the ground, especially because we're going to have some warmer temperatures this week, maybe not as much rain. But you can see about the size here that Walters provides. This is an allium called Bubble Bath. It is similar to like the Millennium Alliums that you see that bloom during the summer, but it can get pretty tall and the blooms on it are actually really large. And so it resembles more of a bulb type allium. It's really difficult to shoot videos in the spring around here. You may see the wind blowing behind me. Uh, we're just going to have to deal with a little bit of that wind noise if we can. It just happens to be really windy today and it's kind of cool and the sun's not shining so much. So it's a little chilly. So these are the alliums that I'll be planting. And these over here are the Stilby Dark Side of the Moon, which is an interesting variety because it has dark foliage, really dark purple, almost black, depending on the sun. As it says, it can take full sun. We're going to test that out a little bit this year because this area will be getting probably much, pretty much full sun. It's going to be protected from the harsh evening sun, but it will be in a full sun location. I've got 25 of each of those and all of them may not fit in this space. What I like to do with a lot of these perennials that I order is put most of them in one location, but tuck some elsewhere in the garden, try to create some continuity between garden spaces to kind of connect them. I'm also going to be planting in this space a Hakanakloa called Lemon Zest. Now it's supposed to be arriving today by UPS, but it said it could be as late as 7 o'clock today. So I just needed to get this job er done earlier. I'll show you those in the next video or a separate video when those come in. I may go ahead and plant them not on video just to get them in the ground sooner so I can start maybe mulching some of this area. But I ordered some other plants from other online shops. This one come from One Green World and it's called Cherry Berries Winter Green. Now over winter, I was looking and over the past few winters, really, I do a lot of plant searching to find some interesting varieties that you can't really find locally uh, and that a lot of people don't carry. And so I was looking for ground cover specifically, and this is a ground cover called Winter Green. The berries are edible and they're supposed to have that winter green flavor but this one's called cherry berries. It only gets about six inches high. It can take part sun to dappled shade. So we're probably gonna put this kind of over in this location next to these boxwoods I showed you in the last video, where it kind of kind of creep and crawl uh, along the ground over time. Uh, one green world, I'll put a link to where I got this below because there's not a whole lot of places that sell it. Shipping what did cost more than the plant. Shipping plants these days is really expensive and this was incredibly well packed. They actually put a dowel in the box through the plant so the plant couldn't move around in the container and it was wrapped in plastic. Really, really good shipping method. I don't know that I've seen with any other uh, shippers or providers before. This plant is also really winter hardy. So all the way down to USDA zone four, which is negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 34 degrees Celsius, and it spreads slowly, like I mentioned, as a ground cover. So it's continuing to produce blooms right now because it's spring. You can see the buds right here at the front of it. But let's just get a close up there. I just really love it. It gives me a very Christmas holiday feeling, but it'll be like this 
kind of throughout the year outside of the season. What's interesting about this variety is its berries are supposed to be like twice as large as the common wintergreen uh, ground creeper. So I'm excited to get this one in the ground. Probably, like I said, put it around here. You'll notice I put some stakes in the ground right here and behind me. I still have some shrubs coming in. Actually, the UPS guy went just by. So I may be able to show you before I finish this video what the Hakana Kloa is going to look like. And I may wait a minute just to see if he drops off these plants. That way I can space them out. One thing I want to make sure is I have kind of a even mix in here, but let's get back to these stakes. These stakes are for potential shrubs that I'll be getting in May. And so I want to make sure I don't plant a whole lot of perennials directly around them, leave enough space. Uh, and those will be in a separate video that I'm creating. I'm waiting for a nice day where I can just sit down outside and do that video. And so I didn't want to fill up the space with all the perennials that I got in and not have space for those tiny shrubs that I'm getting in in May. So you'll see I've got one here, one back there, one here between these uh, Fire Chief Arborvitae right here. And we'll just leave probably the stakes in the ground. That way I don't forget. It won't look so great for the next month, but at least it's a reminder that I intended to put something there. All right, sun's finally coming out, so I might be able to take this cap off. Uh, if it gets a little warm. Talk about perfect timing. That took like five minutes since I saw the UPS guy. So this is a brand new variety of Hakanakaloa called Lemon Zest. Uh, I saw it last year, 2022, at Cultivate in Columbus, Ohio, and I had to have it. Well, I tried contacting the nursery to see if they could send me some directly that developed this variety. They didn't have any they could send. I contacted Great Garden Plants to see if they could add some and or order some and add it to their lineup online and the nursery that bred it i think it's called briggs wanted an absurd amount minimum number of trays so if you're looking at buying wholesale plants and you have a company that you can buy them with that's one of the things that can become an issue as some companies require a minimum number and some of that number is outrageous amounts of trays that you'd have to buy which would make it worth it for the home gardener so you have to be kind of selective and there's still stuff that you may not be able to buy uh, as someone creating like csa bouquets or something like that in your backyard but uh, I did find them at Wayside Gardens. Wayside Gardens, I think, is a division of Park Seed. So if you grow any plants from seed, uh, you may have ordered seeds from Park Seed before. They have lots of nice varieties. But the interesting thing about this variety is it is so bright. So the common, there's Hakanakloa macro, which has this limey green color. There's Hakanakloa all gold, which is a gold color. There's one called Aurelia, I think it is. It's like A-U-R-E-O-L-A -E or something similar like that. And it is what is mo the most popular variegated type variety of Hakanakloa. And this one right here is super bright. So you can see the variegation. Let's see if I can hold that up pretty closely, how bright that is. These are rooted really well. Accidentally, one of them fell out of the pots and you can see it all the way to the bottom here. Very nice, not crowded or anything. So they've been grown on really well. I paid, of course, full price for these. I didn't have a link or anything for you. Um, so you can get a discount. And I think they were, I want to say 15 to $20 a piece, which is kind of a lot. So I've got over $100 worth of this stuff sitting here. But because these are perennials and they spread, you can actually see this one right here is already spreading to the side of the container here. You can, of course, divide these in years to come. So that's why I got six, a good even number to spread around these boxwoods down here. They are, of course, are part shade plant. Now, my part shade i've had issues with when i see a plant that says part shade i tend to want to put them in more shade than they want so i'm going to try and stick these they will get pretty much a lot more sun here if they start burning i may have to move them somewhere where they get a little more shade but i've been trying to over the past few years since i started garden gardening give plants a little more sun than i think they need because typically they can take it and they will oftentimes perform better you know, I just told you I removed all of those wee white hydrangeas around the spruce that was taken down the other day. I removed those because they're, they're part shade plants as being uh, hydrangea arborescence, but they did not perform very well for me. But in a nice full sun location or part sun location up here, they tended to burn really bad. And I just didn't like how the blooms transitioned on those. So 
you just have to try plants in different locations and it might surprise you depending on where you're at in the United States how they perform so we're going to test these out in more of a part sun location is what I'll call it um, they'll get you know morning sun this way kind of be hidden under these boxwoods and then they'll be protected from the very hot afternoon sun this extra sun may encourage them to bulk up a little quicker and that will allow me to spread them around the garden a little more because I'm really excited about this variety you are probably not going to be able to find it locally. Uh, I would be surprised. It may be randomly distributed throughout the United States, but I think Briggs is located in Oregon or Washington. So unless you're in one of those areas that is connected to the nursery regularly, um, this isn't a plant you're probably going to be, a get, be able to get unless you order it online. I don't often see garden centers carry Hakanaklo anyway. I think it's kind of odd. It's a beautiful perennial nice grassy texture that moves with the wind. Uh, of course, it's very short right now. These are gonna be a little ahead of the Hakanakloas that are in my garden, but I've noticed some leaves starting to poke up from those plants as well. And they're not gonna spread a whole lot their first year. After their second year, they get established a little better. Into their third year, you're gonna start noticing some upshoots kind of up to a foot away from the plant. So kind of randomly, depends on your soil conditions, how easily those roots and rhizomes can get through there to spread. But eventually over time, it becomes a really beautiful drift that you can spread around your garden. So I'm going to maybe plant these first under these boxwoods. And then I have all of my bare root perennials that I'm going to look at the picture that I showed you on the screen, I'll show it again, and kind of space these out and how I designed them on the screen. And then I'm just gonna drop them on the ground and then come back and dig holes with my power planter and drill and get these in the ground quickly before the roots dry out anymore. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to get these planted. I have 10 left, both five alliums and five uh, astilbe, and I might stick those in the back back there, or I might fill them with some of the other shrubs because I want them to um, have some space too. So I've kind of spaced these out, allium, astilbe, allium, astilbe through here uh, pretty evenly. Now these will obviously have to be moved in the future because of some of these shrubs grow up and get bigger. Um, that's just something you have to do with gardening. Otherwise it looks really empty. And then I left a lot of the center around the magnolia empty for the annuals. The alliums, I don't know that they will bloom this year. Last year when I planted alliums from bare root, they did not get blooms the same year. And so uh, that may be a next year thing. They tend to be a little slower going if you plant them from bare root than if you put them or got them from a potted container. So I don't know if I'll get any blooms on those this year and they will be kind of tiny this year because as you can see the bare root that I showed you, they was only four or five eyes, I guess you could call it uh, bulbs um, that will pop up foliage. So we'll just have to see how that does um, and then we'll fill up the empty space with animals. Because I'm almost running out of biotone and I don't have any left, I need to grab some more from all the planting I've already done. I'm just going to go grab some holly tone uh, and put 
it in the hole with the alliums because alliums are heavy feeders and that way they'll get plenty of nutrient early and hopefully I might get some blooms off of them this year. I ended up having just some standard plant tone so I put it in this bucket. Uh, this is kind of assembly line process for me so I typically go through and I will dig all the holes then I will come through and backfill and fertilize um, and put the plants in the hole. So we'll just get started. And that is pretty much it. So it's relatively quick with the power planter to get these in the ground. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of super digging really wide, spreading out the roots. I've been doing it this way for several years, just kind of chunking them in the ground and they do pretty well. Uh, I'm going to try and find a spot for the remaining 10 of those plants. Um, I don't think I'm going to put them back there in the back. I will probably put them somewhere over here on the other side near the Red Obelisk Beach at least the still be so we can try them in more of a shady location as well the alliums i'll probably stick in the backyard somewhere i really love alliums because i don't really have this problem but if you do they tend to be deer resistant rabbit resistant they do give you some blooms late in the summer it's a different bloom it's like one of those firework ball shaped blooms and after that it's kind of a it holds its blooms through winter a lot of cases uh, and then before that, it's kind of a green, leafy, um, grassy texture in the garden, which I really love. So I'm going to find a place for the rest of these, and then I think I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go run and get some mulch and spread some mulch tomorrow, some more mulch. I'm going to wait probably right here um, to spread mulch because I still need to plant those plants in uh, May. I may do part of the bed that's already completed up to here where these perennials are. I may go ahead and spread kind of around where I planted the perennials. I want to stay off of them because I don't want to be stepping on them so much, but um, I'm glad this bed is almost approaching completion. Thank you guys for following along, and remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.